What's up, guys? It's Rick from Rick's Rock School. It is a stormy day in Philadelphia, which was giving me major Black Sabbath 1 vibes, and I went, you know what? It's a good day to, to teach a Sabbath 1 lesson. Wicked world. We are blending the worlds of heavy metal and jazz here. And, and, and that's really what makes Sabbath, just separate Sabbath, I should say, from other metal bands, because they could swing. Bill Ward... At, I mean, at his core was a jazz drummer, and all these guys, they, they grew up listening to jazz records, so the band itself has this jazz heartbeat that is really hard to replicate. I'm going to walk you through every single piece of it, every step of the way, guys, but first, a little bit of inspiration. If you don't care for inspiration, I'll timestamp in the description of the video where the lesson starts, and you can skip all this, but a little bit of inspiration. Let's just, let's just take a little bit of a Tony Iommi appreciation. First of all, he's one of my favorite guitar players in the world, and if if you're watching this, you probably know that he does not have any of his first three fingertips on his fretting hand. He's a lefty, so he's missing the fingertips on the first, second, and third. And if you knew that already, you already know the story I'm going to tell. And if you don't, you're going to go, what? The dude that played Iron Man didn't have fingers? Yes. Check this out. So when Tony Iommi was a teenager, he, he goes to his mom. He says, he says Mom, my friends, we, we formed this awesome band. I'm quitting my job at the sheet metal factory. Because back then, like, 17-year-olds could, like, work at a sheet metal factory cutting sheet metal and stuff. It was a tougher generation. It was a different time. And, uh, and she goes, okay, but no son of mine is going to go and quit their job and not finish out their last day of work. You got to go. You got to finish it out. Okay. So it's the last day. And Tony Iommi, the man, the myth, the legend, he's sitting there and he's thinking about this awesome band. And he's not paying attention. He's doing what any teenager would do. He's just not paying attention to what he's doing. Unfortunately, he worked at a sheet metal factory that, that his job entitled him pushing sheets of metal into this like guillotine machine. And you probably see where I'm going. And he just stuck his hand a little too far out and whap. Fingertips on the first three fingers came off. Now, to somebody that was an aspiring professional musician, losing your fingertips would probably, for most people, be the end of the line and go, okay, let me go just keep working at this sheet metal factory, I guess. But not Tony Iommi. He went home. I'm sure, you know, there was some sadness and some soaking. But after a little bit of that, he went home and he said, no, I'm not giving up. And he made prosthetic fingertips out of bottle caps that he melted down with 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 matches melted down them a little bit and leather so bottle caps and leather and then proceeded to teach himself how to play guitar all over again the first thing he did actually was try to play right-handed that didn't work out so there goes the bottle caps and the leather couldn't quite get the strings to go down he says no nope, i'm not giving up let me get some lighter gauge strings he got some lighter gauge strings and he tuned his guitar down and all of a sudden he goes, well, this is a heavier, heavier sound, a darker, heavier sound. And they went with it. So metal was invented by accident at a sheet metal factory. I always think that that is the coolest thing in the world. And one more, and I, I, I give that story to all of my students, especially the younger ones. They, they tell me their fingers hurt or they want to give up or this, that, and the other. Well, wait a minute. You got to hear about Tony Iommi. So not only is that inspirational, but let's, let's, let's talk about conviction for just a second. Tony Iommi. Tony Iommi was given a job, was given the chance to be the lead guitar player of Jethro Tull before Sabbath had made it. If I'm not mistaken, they were called Earth at the time. His first gig with Jethro Tull was opening for the Rolling Stones in front of thousands of people. He does that gig. There is video of this. Tony Iommi playing with Jethro Tull. He goes, no, I miss making music with my friends. We're going to go do something special. He quits Jethro Tull, an established, signed band. There's just not a teenager alive that makes that decision. He decides to quit the band, to stick with his guns, and go play music with his friends. Black Sabbath was created, and the rest is history. And I do what I do because of Tony Iommi and the rest of the guys in Sabbath. Thanks for listening to my story, guys. Let's break this whole song down from the top. First, you get that awesome jazz swing hi-hat thing. You can find that in Charlie Parker tunes, Miles Davis tunes, things like that. That, that, that swing. Here's what Iommi is playing in the intro. <laughs> the 12th fret of the B string to the 14th fret of the G. And we're going to do a quick pick hammer pull. 12th fret of the G to the 13th fret, which is the major third. Check it out. 
the 12th fret, the G note is our minor third. He's actually going from the minor scale to the major scale, a little Mixolydian blues thing there. And then to the 14th fret of the D, so very bluesy, and then jazz time. Do that twice, and then you're gonna hit an E power chord on the 12th fret of the E string. Because the strings were so light, he always played on his, his power chords on the E string. So if you hear an E power chord, and you're trying to stay true to science and play Sabbath the right way, don't play this, play this. You'll always see Iomi up there. Not, you know, and it, it does, it makes a big difference, particularly if you're using lighter gauge strings with the texture and the tone. Now. So we have 12th fret of the E, 10th fret, back to the 12th fret. There's your intro. Now, this might be my favorite part of the whole thing. Love it. It just, it swings. I mean, again, there's just, Judas Priest doesn't do this. No disrespect to Priest, but Judas Priest does not do this. Motorhead does not do this. Iron Maiden does not do this. Only Sabbath has this jazz heart. So let's learn it. We're going to hit an A power chord, all as a band. And then we're going to play the fifth fret of the D to the seventh fret, to the fifth fret of the G. And we're going to bend the seventh fret of the G. So we have, now we're going to go pick, pull, pick, pull, seven, five, seven, five on the G. We're going to hit that seventh fret of the D, the A note, and then back to an A power chord. So it's... Now we're going to go... Giving that perfect counterpoint there. Five to the seven on the A, you can do a hammer on. Fifth fret of the D, seventh fret, fifth fret, seventh fret of the A, fifth fret of the D, back to the seven. That's what we have. Together. Then we're going to play power chords, A, C, D, three times. Fifth fret, eighth fret, tenth fret on the E string. Hit the twelfth fret of the E, the E power chord, and slide out of it. Then we're going to do this. All right, so we're going to go fifth fret of the A, hammer to the seven, back to the fifth fret, seven, E, six, five, three, that B flat, the flat five, by the way, such an important theme through this album and all Sabbath albums. Flat five sound, so seven, five, seven, six, five, three. We're going to do that three times, and then at the end of that third time, you're going to hit the opening so. Well, Bill Ward drum fill, and it's that drum fill is going to bring us to this. Okay, so, quick hammer, five to seven on the A string. And then pick it again. Fifth fret, D, little vibrato. Alternate pick, your seventh fret of the A string. Four times, then to the fifth fret. We're gonna bring that up an octave. Slide into the 14th fret of the D. 12, G, and B. We're going to use our first finger to grab both of those and give it a vibrato. Then you play the 14th fret, alternate pick four times to the 12th fret. We'll do each of those. We'll do two sets of each of those. Then we're into this. The verse. That patented Ozzy Osbourne whine such a like there's no more perfect voice for an epic guitar that epic guitar Ozzy's voice combo no matter what no matter who is playing guitar for Ozzy and he obviously has good taste 
there's something about Ozzy's voice and a great guitar. It just goes together. So you have this, the octave chord, open E and the seventh fret of the A string, and you go to palm mute and alternate strum. Then we'll play that line again. So four sets of that one. So essentially Ozzy sings the line over just this chord, chug, 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 chug. And then the response, very bluesy here, the response that Iomi plays is that main riff. We come out of that by going like this. And then we are back to the, back to that, that main riff. So we're gonna slide ninth fret, seventh fret, seven, five on the E. Nine, seven, A, nine, eight, seven, five, E. Bring that entire thing up a whole step, up two frets. And we're back into that riff. That's 11, 9, 11, 10, 9, 7. And then back for a whole nother verse, does it all the way around again. Now this is gonna bring us to the solo section. Brings it down, you can hybrid pick. You can finger pick this or you can hybrid pick this. If you're performing it, you probably want to have your guitar pick in your hand the whole time. So we're going to use our guitar pick and our middle finger. Guitar pick to play the bass note, middle finger to play the E string, which the open high E, which is going to be a pedal tone here. We're going to go like this. Okay, so the scale pattern, again, you're just constantly playing the E string between all of these notes. On the D string, you're going to play the 7 to the 9 to the 10. It's going to be B, C, D. Back to the C, or back to the B, I'm sorry, to the A. You're going to play the 7, the 9, and the 10. The A, the B, and the C. And we'll play the A to the B, to the C, back to the B. Back to the A, to the G on the fifth fret, to the E on the second fret, to the open D, back to the second fret. So the just the, the scale pattern will go back. That E in between every note, now you got this. Then he'll throw this in after you've done that twice around. He'll go middle finger, even a ring finger or middle finger, but third fret B string, it's a D note. And that open E, he'll throw that in. Back to the scale run. You'll hear that in there. And he, you know, and you could take some liberties with that, but that's essentially what he's doing. Then we're gonna get to the solo. Something along those lines. Here's what we have. We are 14G, 12G, and then 14G. And then we're gonna take our first finger and play the 12th fret of the B and the 12th fret of the E. And then we're gonna bend that 14G, bring it down, 12, and then do that again. Up, down, pull, and then land on your 14D, your E note, your root. Okay. Follow that up with. That's gonna be, it's a repeatable lick. That is one of the licks, like when I was growing up learning, I said, okay, these, these Iomi patterns that are repeatable over and over again are gonna help me build up speed. I should probably practice these. And guess what? These Iomi patterns are very repeatable and they're gonna help you build up speed. You should probably practice them. So you're 14A, 12, 14D. So bump, bump, bump. now you're gonna pick, pull, and then back to 14A. 14A, 12D, 14, 14 again, pull off to the 12, 14A. 
Then it lands on 14D. Now we're going to play a similar lick. But this time, get that 15B bent up. Now that 14G goes up, down, pull to the 12, back to 14G, and then 12G. Aggressive vibrato. That you're bending at 15, you're bringing it down, 12, 14 goes up, goes down, 12, 14, 12. Back to this leg. Three times and then bring that, I'll just move that down the ladder one. So it's... Now, we're gonna play... Use your, your knowledge of your E minor pentatonic scale to get us up to that 15th fret. And then, same type of lick, 15, 12, we're pulling off to 15B. So we have. Then he's gonna grab that 15B and pull off. And then we can repeat this. Bend that 15B again. Bend the 16G, 14G. And we'll play 12, 14, 12 on the G. So slow that down, it's gonna go. And another drum fill, and we're back to. Does all that again, the whole spiel, and ends back on the intro. Guys, as always, it's supposed to be fun. Have fun with it. <laughs>